The following podcast is a Next Level production. Well, not that I care about your opinion, but if I were to improve myself, how would I do it? First, let's sharpen your reflexes. Practice makes perfect. Stand there. When you're fast enough to catch this ball, you will have succeeded. Why not? Okay. But just so you know, I have the hand-eye coordination of a drunk kitten. Ah, see? (laughs) Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I am Robert. And this episode, we're going to be covering Umbrella Academy Season 3, Episodes 7 and 8. So Episode 7 is entitled Alf Wiedersehen, and Episode 8 being Wedding at the End of the World. So at first, we're going to start off with uh, Season 3, Episode 7, Alf Wiedersehen. With that, the actual synopsis of that particular episode is in 1989, Lila digs up one of her mother's secrets. The families join forces to fight the Google Blitz. Reginald teaches Klaus to harness his powers, which is very much enough said. This is literally all it is within the actual episode, which is very true. Right. And is there any... Initial thoughts that you want to talk about, Rob, when we before we get into this? No, just, you know, uh, I always find the character Klaus to be... At first, I didn't like that character, and now it's just, I love his character, especially... It's so entertaining. It's entertaining, especially with all the stuff that he did in this episode. Yes. I just thought it was just very funny. Yeah, and yeah, I, I just enjoyed the overall aspect of uh this particular episode because you got klaus and reginald going on a a road trip now mind you it's his father not his father but he's trying to make him his father (laughs) uh we got turmoil within the uh umbrella academy family itself between victor and allison and a little bit with uh with luther right and then uh on top of that uh, the family's checking out what's going on within the basement due to uh, Mom, the robot, who uh, we should have been suspicious of from the very beginning of the season. Because when she started going kind of chaotic and tweaking and her right. eyes starts bulging and popping out and glowing, that that's kind of alarms right there, especially when they knew their mom or quote unquote mom is a robot. <laughs> Even yeah, with- it, it- uh, it's just one of those powers. things. Yeah, exactly. It's just one of those things where when you look at the episode, you're like, okay, everybody's fighting among each other that they don't even realize all the other shit that's going to happen, you know, around exactly. them. <laughs> so. and, and, and it's not just the their each own family, like the umbrellas amongst themselves, but also right. the sparrows themselves. And then the sparrows against the umbrellas. Because there's that whole... Ben wanting to take over and like attack the umbrellas. Correct. And he has this like, you know, he's got that dastardly, you know, he doesn't have a mustache or anything, but you would think he would <laughs> twirl it and do that. But, you know, come towards the end of the season, he does come around. Yes. And, but he does realize everybody does favor the other Ben that was in the umbrellas in <laughs> comparison to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we get, you know, Luther, uh, you know, pronouncing an engagement and uh, then- which is which is really nice. And then you see um, who's the other chick that he was uh, in love with, Allison. Allison. Yeah. So yeah. You it- can't t- you can't tell whether Allison is jealous of that or if she is just she's changing. Yeah, she's changing so much, that, or she is just still mad. At, I think um, she's mad at her own life. I think that's what everything that she's lost and she has nothing stable, whether it be within her own family, her own right. love life. She's lost so much and she's taking it out on everybody. And with that, her powers are expanding to the point where uh, Harland actually 
changed that the last episode. Right. When Victor and Harlan were together, but then Allison winds up killing Harlan at the very end, which was sad. Yeah. No, I, I found, I found that, um, I, it's funny. I found this episode interesting on like all the turmoil behind, you know, all the, it's a dysfunctional, it's a, it's, it's like saying, Dad had a secret family. Mm -hmm. That is true. <laughs> That's basically what it was. Dad had a secret family, and now we're dealing with the repercussions of trying to merge both families together. Yeah, you yep. know, and so it, it's it's. But Dad is just, an alien and adopted yeah. all these other kids, so we're not related, but we are related. But. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it's just seeing and like just, you know, again, just like the turmoil and the dynamic of the whole, you know, home and everything. And so it's interesting. But you, you're you right. Like she is changing a lot. Yeah. And I think her, I mean, just her anger towards everybody, I think. Anger towards Victor. Right. Anger towards the truth of what happened. Exactly. And the anger towards the rest of the family that are moving on and going on about their life because she can't move on herself because she can't find some sort of focal point, uh, somebody to ground her Correct. at that point. And uh, it's, it's a character that is in deep struggle and feels like they're uh, drowning, but they're pulling everybody else down at the same time. But they're uh, having a hard time explaining it. Right. You know, I, it, it's a character that I do enjoy in the sense that, you know, for the longest time, she was pretty much the anchor of the family of reason. And within the past two seasons, she's been being pulled further down because she lost so much. Right. Whether I'll be, be interested, I'll be interested in uh, because I never read the source book, the comic book or anything like that. Same so here. Yeah, the, the a lot of the source material is uh, been changed or adapted, right? But the, the writing within the show itself, just like with the boys, as you were on before and we covered, uh, it, it's very different. But right. it actually does work with the writing ability of the people to that adapt the comic, these characters and stories into what we see on the show, right? And yeah, we're only so getting far, so one far more it's season. Good. You know. Yeah, I'll be interested to see because I know that um, who's uh, the kid that plays the older man? Who is that? Um, is it five? Oh, five? Yes. Yes. So he's in his mid to late twenties. Well, it's funny because when he first started with the uh, with the whole show in season one, he looks so young. Yes. And you could just see that he's just getting so much older. So he, <laughs> they're just, uh, they're doing the same thing like they did with like, you know. Uh, with Strange Indeed? Yeah. Str no, Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Yeah. Where, you know, all the, all the actors already look, you know, way too grown for, uh, for something that's supposed to be happening almost within the same, you know, continuity, few a few months or, yeah. Yeah. you know, in the, in that world. So, <laughs> all right. Well, with that, we'll, we'll move into our, uh, top points that we love about the episode itself. So I'll start off, uh, with mine. And the first one would be, uh, Lila's turmoil of losing her mother and having to find, more briefcases from the commission and you know she you know she goes to the commission she winds up looking at this thing on repeat of her mother getting killed literally and uh it's due to the uh i guess her being rejected by diego and then being stuck at the commission at this point right kind of like in jail and but she winds up killing a lot of people and she's got this thing which looks like a videotape on loop of her mother <laughs> But then she winds up saying, hey, get me out of here. And uh, OK. And they wind up sending her to where she needs to, which she knew that there was a hidden briefcase in Berlin in the mid 80s at the time right. of the Berlin Wall crashing down. And then she gets the note in the briefcase from her mother and then she's able to do whatever she needs. But we find her playing drums in a new wave German band at that time. 
mm. living life of drugs and rock and roll, which is where we wind up seeing Stan, who she was stuck with because the singer who she was involved with, I guess, was, right. he's kind of bisexual. But they wound up, uh, she winds up seeing this kid saying, hey, uh, you want to have fun? Let's <laughs> screw around with uh, somebody I need, I know, which is Diego. And then that's when the whole history of how she s- drops Stan in Diego's lap and right. states, you have a son. And then that's where we get that. Yeah, because she wanted it. to, it's a messed up thing. She just wanted to see if he could be a good dad. And I was like, what kind of, st- what kind of shit is that? She's kind of crazy. Yeah, no, she, <laughs> but they're, they're, they are right for each other. Oh, that, that is true. They they're are definitely right for each other on that. So. <laughs> yeah. My favorite part was Klaus training with Reginald. <laughs> Yeah, every time he would get hit by a car or something like that. I thought it was just one of the funniest freaking scenes. You know, every time he would get hit, you could just see that he just didn't want it. Towards the end, he was looking forward to it. Yeah, like, well, he, he, was, saw- he was so showing like such enthusiasm because Reginald was like coaxing him more. He got it down to minutes of Correct. every time he would reanimate and come back to life. And it would be down to literally within a minute or seconds. Yeah. And Reginald was having so much fun at this. And you know, Reginald was off his meds at that point. (laughs) And that's because the sparrows were literally drugging him to keep him at bay. So he wouldn't be, but he was literally more enthused. He wasn't, I, I forget the show that, oh, they were watching TJ Hooker together. Right. Uh, of all things, him and uh, Klaus at one point, because that's all that Reginald had to look forward to. But this gave Reginald like some sort of ambition to do something. And we we got kind of sort of the flashback of him in the uh, mausoleum when Klaus was dead. Right. Pretty much with the same thing within like the back trunk of a car <laughs> and him leaving him <laughs> dead in there. Right. And then constantly being hit by a bus, car, multiple of, and it had, and then I I looked at the tracking record as they were he was writing them down. He would say oh one oh two oh three, which is like one two three. It got down to almost like thirty, right to the point where he narrowed it down where Klaus could reanimate fast. Yeah, <laughs> no, and. It's- it was that just wasn't a the funny only test that Reginald wound up doing during this time, but it, it was. But the thing was, you could see Klaus enjoying it, Reginald enjoying it, them right. getting along, and Klaus feeling of I have a father. Yes, no, exactly. He 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 just wanted to. He really wanted to connect, and he wants everybody else to connect with Reginald. So yeah, but I thought what was interesting about those scenes as, as I'm watching, I'm laughing, but then it occurred to me, I went, wait a minute, not a single person has stopped the car and gotten out and said, Hey, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, no, nah, just hit them. Keep on going. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I was like, not a single person said, Hey, maybe I should stop. So I thought that part was really funny. Do you uh, realize that that uh, that actor uh, that plays uh, Klaus? Hmm? Um, I w- you and I were talking about, of course, the Mummy. Um, yeah. In one of and he um, he had a relationship with Sophia Botella. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So I was when I saw that I was looking at his bio. I was like, oh look at that! You know, supernatural. One one person that does supernatural stuff and another one. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. Uh, well, you have to be strange to play those parts. I Robert guess. Sheehan. I should have known his name because uh, my name, Robert. So Robert Sheehan. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, but he he's great. He's absolutely uh, to me. He's like the my favorite characters out of out of there are Klaus and Number Five. Those would be my two oh, favorite. Characters. I I would say the same. Uh, offshoots would be for me would be Lila and Diego. Mm. Yeah. Lila's great. She is just a freaking nut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> and I've seen that actress before too. By the way, 
She has been, um, where has she been in? I'm trying to figure it out. Wasn't she in Slumdog Millionaire? No. Yeah, I think she played a secondary character to that. But there, there's a, a Christmas movie that I do love that came out about three to four years ago called Last Christmas with Amelia Clark. And she plays Amelia Clark's friend in that movie where they, she has to stay over at her house. Ah, okay. At one point. Yeah. So I, I thought it was pretty cool. I, she's a beautiful Indian woman and, you know, Indian British, I, I would say, because she's got a, that English accent, heavy right. English accent. And that's real, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's not, it's not no. fake. Yeah, she graduated from the Oxford School of uh, of Drama. So, yeah. but, and uh, she's actually going to be in the new Barbie movie, which will be interesting. Maybe she plays a, uh, a Hindi Barbie, uh, or maybe Hindi American Barbie, which would be great. Because my friend Sonica, who I know years ago, right, loved the idea of having uh, an Indian style Barbie, which would be amazing to see on screen. <laughs> it's like Americanized one, right. You don't have the right colors in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Sonica uh, would do that though with a heavy Indian accent, but you know she she loved the idea of putting on makeup and everything. Such a lovely woman. <laughs> yeah. So I just looked up her uh, her uh, bio for film, and no, she was not in Slumdog Millionaire. She was in Red Notice. Red Notice, and, yes, yeah, but no, no, she started actually in 2015. So yeah. Yeah, it was okay. uh, yeah. She started later, but very recently in, in film. But she did make an impact on this show. <laughs> yeah, no, she's she's freaking phenomenal in this show. I love her character. I just liked her don't give a shit attitude <laughs> of, of everything that she does, uh, which I think is great. Yeah, and I like the and I like the fact that uh, she's such a perfect perfect match. Yeah, definitely for Diego, the character yeah, is for definitely Diego. a perfect match. Uh, she just basically challenges him all the time. Yeah. And he still tries to struggle through because he just loves her so much. Yeah. And he just ha he has a hard time dealing with that. And it wasn't until like pretty much at the end of this episode. that well, If you think about if you think about it, Diego is like that type of person where he is just this narcissistic, <laughs> you know, well, he's all out there for the violence. Yeah, and <laughs> so who else can actually put up with something like that except her? Yeah, somebody who's crazy, but they were also in Crazy Pants City in the asylum <laughs> yeah. together. <laughs> uh, well, well, another one for me would be the argument between Victor and Allison. Now, this was heated, and this was all about Harlan in front of both families, and that's when Allison pretty much states flat out she killed harlan and right. the reason why she killed harlan was because basically the umbrellas family their 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 mothers were killed by harlan right something that he did unwillingly it wasn't something done consciously he just did it it was just out of losing his own mother in itself and uh him trying to reach out for Victor or Vanya at that time, and he couldn't find them at, at that time because they were somewhere else uh, in a different time, and they were kind of locked. And uh, then the Sparrow Academy came into fruition based upon what Reginald encountered back then when they went back in time, and right. he kind of got rid of the idea. And uh, Steve has a great great theory about why there's no uh like the there there were like x amount of children and why x amount of children were gone right he brought it up in the last podcast when we covered this so uh hopefully when steve comes back on nine and ten with us he could just like bring it all to fruition because i know he'll he'll have his uh memories right. and thoughts all together and collected that way he could wrap up this whole season <laughs> and move forward as we choose to because we're going to cover all of season one of Peacemaker at a later time. 
but yeah i was yeah. uh the one thing i was very another thing that i took away from this uh i was very surprised on how good the effects were for the uh, end of the world oh yeah i was really surprised on that i was like you know they uh they did a pretty good job on that i i thought it was pretty cool yeah they the i think they sprung a lot of the effects for the last three episodes total yeah, no, you know what? And I thought about that too. I said, well, you know, there's a lot of effects going on here. So they probably put all their, you know, eggs in that basket right there. <laughs> they so, had to because yeah. they want to get that climactic feeling. So that way they could get a season four. Correct. And season four is going to be the last. Yes, uh, listeners, uh, it's been confirmed. Season four will be the last of the Umbrella Academy. But I'm glad that they're actually rounding out the series and not just ending it at a one stop like most shows do. Right, right. Yeah. They they end it and then they rush to create stories to end and finalize the series itself. Right. You know, um, Dead to Me was uh, another one I was hoping for more, but with uh, Christina Applegate's uh, sickness. I haven't seen that one yet. It's a very interesting, very interesting show. So what's wrong with uh, Christina Applegate? She's got MS. Oh, In okay. real life. But right. uh, they've only did three seasons. The third season is the last. And oh, they okay. wrapped it up and it's completed. Uh, it's got Linda Cardellini in it. Uh, James Mosters, who is in X-Men, who played Cyclops. Oh, yes. And uh, a slew of other... Uh, actors that are talented in it uh it's a, a a dramedy in a sense that you could there's a lot of humor in it but it's kind of tragic but they did very well but you could see towards the end of filming of season three how is like a physical toll on christina applegate and i'm glad right. that she went out on her own terms when it came to this is it this is what i'm going to end my career with and I thought it was a very good show. Now, mind you, we're kind of variation, uh, you know, <laughs> on tangent and going away right. from what we normally talk about. But uh, it, it's another thing that I do enjoy, like as a drama or comedy that's out there to everybody. Right. So uh, if you want Dead to Me, you can find it on Netflix. And uh, it's got Christina Applegate. Linda Cardellini, they play two main characters within it, and James Marsters. Uh, you could catch the whole series at this point. Okay. But uh, uh, if you want to listen to a, a companion podcast, go to Podcastica and just go to uh, Dead to Me Cast. Dead to the, Me Cast? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they cover that too. Jason, Penny, and Jade cover that. Uh, I, they just finished it up recently. So if you're going to watch the show, watch episodically and just listen to them. I think they maybe do two episodes per uh, podcast. So towards uh, the see. third season. But uh, it's really good. Good companion series. But other than that, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, uh, w when it comes to this, uh, there are a lot of uh, cool things that happen. And it, it just gave me kind of flavors of that within how people are within the drama and the comedy of the show itself. Mm -hmm. And they do it so well, even though it's, you know, it's fictitious. Um, hmm. uh, another favorite of mine would be, uh, well, of all things, this is the funniest part of it. At the very end, Luther asking Sloan to marry him on the roof. <laughs> it was a great way to end that episode. I thought, yeah. Uh, especially during the end of the world, because you see everything decaying in there. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> no, the it's. Uh, <laughs> I I I always again I find the dynamic between everybody, but it's just more of a um, how you could be so calm if you know with the world ending sometimes and like the way they carry on, mm -hmm. you would think that they'll be freaking out a lot more, and they not they're not. You know, or at least not the way we, I think, would. <laughs> so, yeah. but that's why that part, like, you know, when he did that, everybody's just very chilled you know, on the rooftop. So, yeah. And we get another happy ending, too, with Lila telling Diego that she's pregnant. 
Yeah. And, and that, you know, she said that uh, the other kid was just, just to test him. I, again, Stan that's was there so just to test him, but she still up. misses him. That is so messed up. It is so messed <laughs> up. It's just like that was her test. And, you know, and even Diego says it, but he kind of like stated, he goes, we, we still don't have Stan. Yeah. And it shows the compassion between both of them. She goes, I miss him. And, you know, it's there. And she knew right then it's like he would be a great dad. There's right. hopes <laughs> in my <laughs> feeling as, as grim as it is, there is hopes for these two to being good parents as crazy as they both are. I would love to see like, just uh, probably like a, um, what I would say, uh, just kind of an offshoot on just like, you know, just like maybe a, a, a limited series on just those two. Diego and Stan. Yeah. Being, parent, <laughs> being parents. Oh, Lila and Diego. Lila being and parents. Diego. Being, <laughs> yeah. Being parents and stuff like that. And just kind of seeing all the crap that they go through and, you kind of say to yourself, oh, my God, this poor child. I mean, what's going to happen? No, to no, <laughs> I don't think it's the poor child. I think with them being special as they are as being enhanced. Right. Uh, uh, just to use that word or term. Uh, think of a child having explosive diapers. <laughs> It'll probably, probably be like a live version of The Incredibles. With, <laughs> yeah, uh, literally. With Jack, with Jack Jack. Jack yeah. Jack. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But we, we got those two really good feelings at the very end of the episode, but we also get another sense of dread. Right. Uh, during this, uh, you know, you, you had the families come together within it, which is another favorite of mine. You see them all, you know, uh, Ben shows up to uh, his own chambers where Victor is crying after his break, you know, his like argument with Allison. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he gives you that whole, please don't get tears on my bed emo. It sounds exactly like who you are, blah, blah, blah. You can't really resolve these issues with your own family. You're kind of weak, which kind of makes Victor step up. Right. Which is pretty cool because then Victor winds up going downstairs and they realized because between both families, they realized that in order to get the Google Blitz contained, they had to do that with all of them, which were key powers. Unfortunately, one is dead. And uh, Victor doesn't want to partake in it. You got Sloan, you got Christopher, you got Lila. Right. And all of them in their powers combined, because Lila will mimic whatever Victor can do, and they can both contain it, and Sloan could just uh, literally isolate, and then Christopher would just basically contain everything. Right, right. To do it. So they wind up, are able to do this, and it was cool to see them do this whole containment situation, almost like a Ghostbusters thing. Where they're able to contain this explosion, this Kugel Blitz. They do do it. And the funniest part out of it is at the very end, everything gets into Christopher and he kind of shakes, shakes, shakes and rumbles and then he farts. <laughs> <laughs> but at the very end, as Fee and Ben are talking about the umbrellas and the sparrows as they are as families and how they are trying to come together. There's a clink of a glass. And when Fee, uh, Fee is, I, I look at her as, uh, I said it to Steve before, the sister of the evil guy at the crow who is blinded at the end of the crow movie, if you remember. She talks right. to the crows. Mm -hmm. uh, she gets all the crows, and that's who is overseeing during the, uh, the Umbrella Academy. Yeah, uh, Fee, that is. Uh, she winds up clinking her champagne glass on Christopher, and then Christopher starts shaking, erupting, and it explodes right. the Kugel Blitz, and that's how it ends. And such an explosive ending. But unfortunately, we lose Christopher to this at this point. All right. You know, we did not know what Christopher was saying half the time, but I always enjoyed what he had to say because everything was kind of snarky and funny at the same time. <laughs> 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 but yeah it, uh, that that's how uh, season 3 episode 7 ends with uh, Alf Wiedersehen right <laughs> but okay. 
which leads us into um season eight i mean season eight uh season episode eight. wow <laughs> wow that's a long one no yeah. season three episode eight wedding at the end of the world right yeah and uh that particular synopsis says with the universe collapsing around them the gang gathers for a day of romance awkwardness and debauchery at the hotel obsidian yep and so. uh as we know, the Hotel Obsidian is pretty much uh, a character unto itself, too, because we learned that within this particular episode. Right. From the very beginning, because we see Reginald creating the Hotel Obsidian. And and it's slowly, it's kind of like a time-lapse thing. Right, like that's a documentary. true, documentary. Yeah. And you start to realize he's the architect of this oblivion so to speak, quote unquote, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> literally he's creating oblivion. And well, I mean, when he sent uh, like one of the cool things that, you know, as you progress through the, uh, through the episodes, you get, you kind of get to see all the, all the little stories, mm -hmm. you know, of what they're doing. I thought like, you know, especially when he sends the uh, soldiers down the, uh, the secret tunnel and they are all slaughtered. It's just all <laughs> these little things that you're like, holy crap. You know, it's just like there's more and more to it. Yeah. And it just kind of sucks you right into it. So I thought that was interesting because it's like, it's like you were saying, like, you know, you see Reginald, you know, begin construction of the, you know, the hotel, but then you see that part too. And you see that throughout the entire series. There's always something that, <laughs> you know, they know there's a hidden secret here. There's a hidden secret there. A hidden room. A, a hidden room. <laughs> and all these things just kind of are coming to an, you know, to to this point towards the end of the uh, the season, uh, which I found very interesting. The best part about this is, uh, from what I I remember, is that you know, regardless of seeing the uh, the time lapse of him creating it, we do see the the white buffalo room. Uh, yep. We see uh, the the Plinko kind of game right there that opens up the room that Lila and Diego had to go through where Diego lost his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember that. Uh, and then on top of that, they lose Stan that way as well. I think it's, uh, it, it's literally uh, Reginald's Chamber of Secrets of the Unknown and uh, Oblivion, as it were. And it's a way for him to trap try, trying to get home. Literally, it's an alien trying to get home, if you think about it. Because right. we all know Reginald Hargreaves is an alien. And he's just been trying to get back, or if not, take over the universe. And and that's what surprised me about the whole thing when I saw that. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it, regardless, no matter what iteration of Reginald Hargreaves we, we get, he is evil. <laughs> He's there to try to take <laughs> over the world, what whether it be hook or crook, with all these anomalies, which he calls his children, whether it be the umbrellas or the sparrows. But the one thing that he just doesn't get or understand is that he underestimates his own creations. Right. And those creations wind up retaliating because they're vengeful children against their stepfather as it were, or uh, adoptive father. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I, I, so, I, I just love the irony within it <laughs> and, and how it all unfolds, regardless of how many timelines. They, it's all explosive. We, we saw that in the first season with Vanya when she blows up everything. Right. We saw it in the second season when they the change history and uh, wind up going through and then changing that and destroying more stuff and then going into a completely different other timeline with other family involved. I'm just curious as to what we get in the forest at this point, but we yeah. haven't gotten there yet. It, it would be interesting to see how, I mean, because towards the end, you're like, well, no, well, at the end, you kind of see everything. What I mean, we're getting way further than, you know, yeah. than the other two, but what happened towards the end, you're like, oh, okay, so how is that? How are they going to, you know, explain all that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so 
Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we already talked about the cold opening, Reginald's plans. We already know what's going on. L- let's talk about the whole family wedding, uniting both families together for Sloan and Luther. Yes. I-, I thought just the bachelor party was just so much fun to watch. I like watching them all dance, and it's funny because you could tell, and I've seen some behind-the-scenes stuff mm-hmm. when it comes to like the actors dancing and and it's funny they they're they're actually having a real good time. Good time. Yeah. And and that <laughs> you could kind of see it through the uh th- through the filming of this, you know. So when you see them dancing, there's actually like a really good time they're having. And I and but when you see the behind the scenes, they're laughing their asses off and it's like that that just seems like a cool job. <laughs> I thought it I thought it was amazing. Uh, plus also the fact that Luther asks Victor to be his best man. And I thought that was pretty cool. I was actually surprised on that one. I was surprised too, uh, because as much as Luther was against Vanya slash Victor, right, in the, the the first two seasons, because they destroyed the world, <laughs> and, right. and, you know, and destroyed <laughs> the family at a certain point. The fact that he showed trust in him, and right. I I thought that was so much right there. Especially what Victor had gone through and changing who they are into what they are now. Right. And and it was such a, you know, obviously it was a sudden shift of uh, character change, gender change uh, within the show. Because, uh, you know, it's either they or them when it comes to Elliot Page. But with with this, they did it so drastically, but it did it smoothly, I thought. A lot for a lot of people is very sudden. To me, I felt it very natural. And with how the characters are and how messed up they are, I mm-hmm. think they already adjusted to change as it were when, you know, Fanya says, I'm Victor now. Right. But uh, the fact that Luther accepts Victor as his brother and says, You're my best man. And, and, how fun it is to see them when uh oh I, I I'm forgetting the the songs that they oh uh Luther does Total Eclipse of the Heart, which is so awkward to watch when you see a guy in a big huge gorilla body do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh Klaus some, I have to and admit, they have some doing great... I had the time of my life. Yeah, they have some great music on this show. I I'm, I was Throughout the years, they did, and I I love the soundtrack of the show itself. I actually have, there is a Spotify playlist for you listeners that are out there called The Umbrella Academy. You can go check it out and subscribe to it. Uh, It's people that put in all the music, but they also give you other things that are similar to it, but the majority of it is the catalog of songs that they've used over the past three seasons. Uh, one of which uh, was the space one when it came to Pogo. That one I loved. I, I'm forgetting the name of the the artist and the music, but it was from the '80s. Right. Uh, I just I just love that song. I that. keep saying to myself, I was like, man, their their music uh, budget is huge. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're paying a lot to SAG AFTRA and yeah, uh, you know, BMI and and everybody else. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, the music alone does it does tell a story within and uh but also like you know, like I said, the karaoke or karaoke uh the for the bachelor party was fun to watch and to see them all get together and get drunk and oh, have a good time. I, I, not only did I like it, but I, I like the way Diego like, you know, he take he was uh takes a, a sip of the drink. And then as soon as he like he, spits it, it he, just, he spits it out like what the <laughs> fuck is this thing? Because <laughs> they don't know what it is. <laughs> they don't know what it is, but <laughs> but it was just that look like it, and it reminded me of uh of Will Smith in Men in Black when they went to visit um that lady in the farm and she offered him lemonade. Oh yeah, and, and she put all the sugar in. <laughs> 
right and she's sitting and, he, and he's sitting there and like you know he takes it and as soon as he takes the t- that little taste he just kind of spits it right back out <laughs> and i when i saw diego do that i just started laughing because i was like yep that that reminds me of that it's just it was just kind of a nice uh <laughs> reminiscence like, of that yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> that's a good take yeah uh, the one thing that made me laugh too within the episode is Klaus and Reginald just showing up at the hotel after their whole journey out into the world and him learning how to use his powers. Right. Talk about how, you know, Reginald helped him with his powers outside. But of course, you know, the marriage is against what Reggie wants, you know, well, once he learns of the marriage and what they're, they're up, up to for both families and finds out that Reggie was not taking his pills. It's typical Reginald. Right. It's just him being Reginald trying to play on the families as who they are from what he knows. He doesn't know much about the the Umbrella Academy. He does know more about Sparrows because in this reality, he knows them best. Right. But he's lacking a lot of his children. They already lost Christopher. They lost Droopy Face. They lost the hot chick who spit Venom. (laughs) <laughs> yeah oh, man I, I i missed that chick she was hot and then uh <laughs> who else there, there's oh, oh the the number one from them was gone all they got is ben and fee <laughs> that's all that they have is ben and fee right and i think they lose fee at this point <laughs> they keep losing people they keep losing people all that's left is ben of that particular yeah. family and Sloan. Yeah. And it's interesting how Ben looks at them. Like, you know, the, uh, the umbrella. He's detesting Academy. them. I don't like them. And yeah, but I think it's more because they keep comparing. He see, the yeah. He's other comparing ben to him. Well, not only that, but the fact that he sees how close they are. Yeah. Um, and he wants that deep down. I think he does. I think like when you when you watch him, you could tell that he's somehow jealous, jealous. And he detests his own family for not being that way. But he will never say it. No, no, exactly. I think you he know, hit it he, right on right. the head. Yeah, he would just <laughs> never say it. But it's just something that's a closeness that I think that he wishes. And not only that, but also seeing. Um, uh, Luther and. What's uh, the girl's name? Um, the one that he marries? Sloan. Sloan. He sees Sloan just kind of gravitate towards their side mm-hmm. so easily. Yeah, and he feels and like think, he's losing he, something. Yeah, he's losing, you know, that too. But I so think like, the, through the course of the actual wedding party, though, yeah, he loosens up. He does. And, he does. Yeah, and he feels a little bit. Yeah, he does. It's just, but you still see that kind of like that, you know, like that resentment, you mm-hmm. know, I guess, or something like that. So, I, I uh, just, I, I just enjoyed the fact that you know, during that, um, the wedding party afterwards when they're eating, you know, we we mentioned it earlier with uh, Luther trying to be saying to Sloan, "Oh, you're not going to eat that? I'll eat that." <laughs> and he's like, yeah. "Typical Luther, he's going to eat everything because he's right. a big gorilla." Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we still forget he's got a gorilla's body with a human head (laughs) and a man's waist. Was that so? Okay, so here's a question because, again, like I never seen, I never read the original comic book or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, Is he a mutant in that sense, or was he like today? Did you know he was always strong? But this, in this case, when Reginald fused the body, the upper torso of the body to luther it literally just enhanced who he was and made him more so so his what his head his head was attached to a different body is that what it was his head was attached to the upper torso of a gorilla the bottom half of him was human oh so it's literally his arms his uh chest and torso were all gorilla the rest of him was human all right. I mean, it's. I was wondering, 
what I mean again, it's it's been a while since I've seen the other two, so I'm not sure if they if they covered those in the other seasons. Yeah, they they do explain it. That's why they do because explain you, it. They, you can see his arms; they're all hairy. He's got big fingers and hands, uh, right. but the rest of them is kind of grayish. But it, you can see around his neck because he's a white man. He's, right, right. You know, I don't know if he was part of the British or German because they took these kids from all different areas. But he was definitely definitely part of the white section. Okay, so, but uh, the gorilla features were very much grayish and brownish right, right. down below from his chest all the way down to his torso. Hmm. So, so uh, maybe his legs. I don't know, but the, <laughs> yeah, maybe you got the gorilla function of that too. I feel bad for the woman has to get in bed with him, <laughs> but they uh, literally. It's like he's literally a lot gorilla so he's right. got the feeding frenzy of i gotta eat eat eat, eat like a right. like a heavy gorilla yeah i like was just wondering roots. about that because i know he's like you know this huge you know uh yeah character so just wondering if uh he was merged or if he was just genetically uh altered he was genetically grafted with all okay. this stuff from the gorilla okay so he's not he's not completely human, but he's not completely gorilla. But he's half and half. Right. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is that with, with that, you could see Reginald kind of staying away and he's eating his fruit. Yeah, I like yeah. the fact that Klaus was the one that actually uh, was the uh, what is it? The one that married both of them. <laughs> yeah, the, that that was the coolest part too. It's like yeah, class uh, taking charge of the nuptials and getting a uh, wedding them together and saying it was meant to be and viva l'apocalypse at the very end of it. <laughs> uh, the family on the dance floor, all of them, including Ben. It was something that was very much out of like a video game with the filming too. If you yes. look at how it was uh, you know filmed. But the dance partners and who they take with one another as family to dance with with one another is very interesting. Uh, plus those that don't dance, you know, meaning Victor and uh, Five at times. And uh, but you do see Lila, you see Diego, you see Sloan, you do see Luther together with Sloan. Um, Allison is not dancing. So but Luther, uh, I think Victor eventually, but it was kind of um they do celebrate and uh, i thought it was uh very good it is showing yeah. the families coming together and i thought it was very good uh i like when luther um is eating and all of a sudden he looks over at Slo at uh at sloan's uh uh plate and wants to get something out of her plate she's just like looking i was like you you want my food <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i started laughing you know why because i had that same reaction with my girlfriend when i first met her you know yep. i was about to like grab, and she like kind of looks at me like why are you reaching into my plate <laughs> oh i i've gotten that too and uh with women i've dated too it's like <laughs> so, no you got yours you can't eat you got mine. yours yeah exactly <laughs> so when i saw that it just kind of reminded i was like oh now i get it and sometimes it's on my part too it's like i'm picking from like, excuse me <laughs> you're like you want my shrimp you want my you said you didn't want that yeah, <laughs> exactly so it, it, i saw that and i just thought it was cute when i saw it I, I thought it was cute from them and i was like oh that's what my girlfriend meant <laughs> it, it's a, a typical relationship <laughs> thing whether it be both ways you know Correct. it works both ways exactly but yeah they started quick you know <laughs> very early <laughs> but it works and it shows yeah the, that yeah. that is true love too i guess um one thing that I wanted to point out, too, is the commiserating of both Ben and Allison during the wedding party. They were like two drunken sailors talking yeah, about the, the situations between the families and how they were. And it's just like, OK, they're meant to be to hang out together. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but oh, we already mentioned that, you know, Reginald was isolated from, you know, both families during the wedding party. 
Correct. They all pretty much didn't want him there. <laughs> there was so much hatred. Yeah, they really didn't. I mean, which is surprising. Well, I mean, not not surprising and surprising. I mean, because I mean, we're talking about Ben, right? So it, their Ben is so, like the sweetheart of a guy. Yes. So I'm sure that they wish that this guy was just the same. Well, <laughs> even this Ben says towards the end how he feels like I could be your Ben. I want to be your kind of Ben because it right. sounds like he was such a great guy. And he really it's like basically in a drunkenness saying like, yeah, I'm the jackass that you got. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I'm saying. That That's why you could sell. You could tell that throughout the 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 entire season, he just resents them so much. But. By it's this like time, you, he, by this time, he kind of breaks down, and he just like, I wish I, yeah, would have been I, that person instead I, of the I, person. I, would, I want to be that guy that you talk about because Correct. I, I feel that way. Uh, also, within the wedding party too, uh, with Reginald, when Diego introduces Lila to Reginald, uh, Reginald agrees with Diego's taste in women. <laughs> but then shuts it down <coughs> stating you would have been a stupendous father meaning that there's like this ultimate doom that Reginald has to state about Diego and Lila and everything else that's going on around them and then Diego looks at Reginald with concern you know meaning that you know Reginald knows something that's gonna that that's gonna happen because he pretty much is like yeah I kind of laid out this whole apocalypse you idiot yeah no he <laughs> like that's why you know what is it I think it was five who overhears Reginald uh, about his plan right doing a deal at, you know with someone in the uh, white buffalo suite so it was, uh, that I found yeah it's like you were saying that that I found interesting it's like oh okay this guy it's just like the, the way he planned everything and the way you know and, and he just kind of sits there like a human being yeah, but in reality, you know, he's just uh, not from this world. <laughs> it's true. Well, he doesn't. Uh, he's an alien. I guess they don't have hearts. <laughs> <laughs> if they do, they have two and they're gifted to somebody else. I don't know. <laughs> Aliens either don't have a heart or they got more or they, they don't have one. They'll have two or three. <laughs> so that they do. All right. Well, uh, well, then we had that very ending with uh, Reginald giving his speech full of pleasantries, but to change things with five when Reginald basically gets five so drunk, he forces him into an elevator and captures him for his own. I don't remember that part. That's, that's a, at the very end. At the very end? At the very end, he just tosses him in and locks him in to go up to his suite. I oh, so wait. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I'm tr like I said. I'm tr <laughs> uh, I'm trying yeah. to remember some of the uh, little details there. So, yeah. Reginald kind of swoons everybody with his speech about right. the 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 married couple and about family and how coming together. Blah blah blah. Five is drinking more and more. I agree with that, Dad. Blah, blah, blah. And he kind of moves on. Right. The family gets together, have their little powwow, as it were. And Five leaves for some reason. I'm, I'm thinking it, he had to go use the bathroom. Well, Reginald kind of throws him into an elevator. Uh, right, right. Now I remember, yeah. The one part, the one part I liked was, yeah, like we, I think we were talking about that, like how the whole group sits drunkenly at the uh, courtyard, yeah, as the Kublis consumes the uh, city above them, and they're um, just watching the whole. They're just watching the whole thing, and Luther remarks that he finally has the family he's always dreamed of. Yep, and that was actually pretty cool. And it's funny because you would, I when I saw this, I was like, you know what, the I for some reason I thought this was the season finale. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would know, think too they could have ended think, it right. on here right if the show was not reupted for another season well they i mean the way they left it off they left it off with a cliffhanger mm -hmm. with uh luther with over here all oh, right luther overhearing uh reginald in the uh, buffalo suite plus you know that that part right there uh but no there were two uh two more episodes which two more were, episodes actually, yeah but even we'll the last that. episode when we get to it ladies and gentlemen is very different and it could easily have ended the series 
with just that one season alone. And I think whenever they did these seasons, they ended it in the sense of, hey, we're not going to get another season. So they left it so that if it just stopped at that point, okay, that's where it ends. Right. I mean, nowadays, you could say that a lot with a lot of the shows that are uh, (laughs) being shown on TV. It's like, this might be the only season they get. Yeah, because you don't know where the story's going to go or the next money that's going to come for the project is going to come right. from. No, exactly. So they're, they're looking ahead in the sense that if it ends, it ends. But, well, with that, uh, that's pretty much our coverage with uh, Season 3, Episode 8 of Umbrella Academy. Uh, I only have uh, one quote when it came to this. Okay. Actually, I, I actually have other, uh, <laughs> a few quotes from uh, episode seven, which I'll throw out there. Go ahead. Uh, episode seven's uh, quotes to start off with Lila going, Ding dong, the bitch is dead. May her daughter pay instead. <laughs> and that was when she was at the commission and when she was approached by the heads of the commission at that time, the little guy who plays Pogo normally in the show right, right. with the glasses and the, the lady, because she already took out half of their uh, security crew and she's just watching her mother's death over and over again. And, and uh, from who was formerly head of the commission. Right. So uh, that, that was an interesting quote. Uh, Diego from uh, season three, episode seven saying, I didn't get this giving a mummy a hand job. I'm not losing more fingers. <laughs> Referring to the room to Oblivion that him and Lila were previous in in the last episode and uh, season three, episode six. Because right. he lost the fingers fighting the other soldier guy or the uh, samurai style warrior guy that, that was cutting him up. So, right, right. literally, if you remember now, everybody, he only has like three fingers left. <laughs> <laughs> By the end, uh, by the end of the uh, the entire thing, is just be a nub. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> but we'll see. We're gonna get to that when we get to that last episode because things change. Right. Uh, the last one I have for uh, season three, episode seven, would be uh, Mom, the actual robot, saying, "You didn't tell me you were building a jail for God." And that was while the family, both families were trying to contain the Google Blitz. Right. And uh, that was a true telling, too, because, you know, you got a robot talking the ideas of uh, heresy at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and the only one that I have for uh, Season 3, Episode 8 would be Ben saying, It's Hadron, not Hardon, you moron. <laughs> and that was his reference to Diego when... Diego states that they just need to send the Google Blitz to space with the Hadron. <laughs> with the yeah, with the Hadron Collider, it is like the Hardon Collider. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember hearing that, and anyway, he told him because uh, I was like, that was the first thing I was like, "You Hadron, you idiot!" <laughs> and all of a sudden, he says the same thing. <laughs> yep. So uh, yeah, I I thought the same thing. No, I w- I would say overall, I mean the uh this season was actually very interesting. Um yeah. I I like the season. I like the sh- I I like all three seasons so far. I like the changes that they've, you know, they had. Um sometimes it's a little confusing and you get to the point where you're like where the hell is this going? <laughs> and then they bring it in and you're like, "Oh, okay." So, but they they've had they've had these were two good episodes. Yeah. These were two, and we got two more that are just amazing, too, to finalize out the season three. Uh, it's something that uh, we'll be coming back to, hopefully, within the next week. Hopefully, Steve will be back at the same time, so all three of us could uh, talk about the uh, the last two episodes. Steve's been away for a while. He's been dealing with health issues, but also getting on the mend, as well as dealing, you know, having fun with family, too. He's uh, been spending the holidays and having a good right. time. He yeah, had some good. good getaways, which is great. Uh, he's healing better. So more uh, props to our friend Steve, who's out there. And will be coming back soon, definitely for Peacemaker. So we'll keep you guys apprised of what's going on. But 
Uh, for now, we didn't get any feedback because I really didn't put anything out there. And I'm sorry, folks and panelers that are out there that you listeners, it, it's just that I've been wanting to get this stuff out and we've been putting out episodes as we came. So you got Werewolf by Night, you got <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, the holiday edition. I've been trying to get them out every few weeks or a couple of weeks while Steve's been away. But uh, with dealing with Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, Sandman Cast, all that good stuff, and holidays with work, it's been busy. So uh, my apologies to you. So if you're sticking with us with this and following through to the end of Umbrella Academy, thank you so much. Uh, but here these episodes are, and we are going to complete with the next episode for the last two of Umbrella Academy Season 3 uh, for 9 and 10. And then yeah. we're going to go right into a full season, like, you know, uh, review about Peacemaker that was on was on HBO Max. So, uh, you know, you'll have such Rob, a great, such a great show. Yeah, you'll have Rob here and Steve and myself, maybe uh, another person will jump on if they want to. Yeah. Uh, our friends that are out there just to I uh, actually look fo- I actually look forward to uh, revisiting that. Um, yeah, because I like that show so much. Uh, it, it was such a surprise. It was over uh, the top James Gunn. And we could all talk about the suicide, suicide squad that came out before it. Right. Because that kind of led into it. And we'll talk about the history Correct. behind it and why we get this peacemaker show. So, uh, yeah, but th- thank you listeners for, uh, and panelers just for keeping up with this. And yeah. that are continuing to listening. I'm starting to. I'm seeing the downloads. I'm seeing the streaming. You guys are listening, so thank you for being there. Uh, as far and I, I and I want to give a sincere apology. I, I was not as ready as I should be for this podcast. Not because you know I, I didn't see the episode. It's just I saw them a while back ago. Yeah, and there were just things that I couldn't remember and things that I started remembering. Uh, but overall, I did like I like this. But I could tell you for uh, for the next two episodes, I definitely uh, will be uh, be on point. <laughs> be on point on that. <laughs> I, I was kind of leading the way, but the but as soon as you trigger certain thoughts, it, because it comes back as yes. soon as somebody mentions it, it's just as if we're in the same room and we're talking about this at work or something by the water cooler, and be like, "Hey," I was like, "Yes, I remember that." Exactly. And, and it's the coolest thing. That's the whole point of podcasting. But uh, as far as like with feedback, we didn't get anything because I didn't post anything, like I said. But if you do have any feedback, still send it in nonetheless. And to send feedback, as always, all you have to do is uh, literally just go to our Facebook page, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels podcast. Or Panels to Pixels, actually. No. So it's www.facebook.com slash Panels to Pixels. Uh, you could go to our Twitter account, which would be at Panels to Pixels, which would be Panels, the number two, and Pixels. Uh, if you want, you could just send an email, and that could be sent to Panels to Pixels1 at gmail.com. That's Panels, two sp- spelled out T O, Pixels, and the number one at gmail.com. You could just send out a texted email as normal, just written out, or you could just record your voice and send it in as an attachment, and we'll play it when we're on the next time when we record, and we'll definitely reference the episode that you were uh, sending the feedback for. You could also go to our Instagram page, which would be at panels 2 pixels podcast, spelled out specifically, panels 2 spelled out T-O, pixels podcast. Uh, and uh, just to give you a little bit updated news, Panels of Pixels will be on the Pirate Car Entertainment Network come uh, this year. Well, we're already in the new year, but uh, give it uh, another month or two, and we'll definitely have it on the Pirate Car Entertainment Network <laughs> on the website itself. So uh, welcome that. Uh, ben gave me his... Uh, all his best when it came to that and said, Hey, just take it there. And I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, I don't know if that was, uh, the best or sympathies, (laughs) (laughs) 
but we do love Ben. And we also do recommend Wilhelm. Well, we Absolutely. will always plug Wilhelm, too, for Ben. He's got a lot of interviews coming up for the Wilhelm podcast, uh, just to give love to podcasts that are out there, as well as Podcastica with Run For Your Lives. They're making the transition over from Pirate Car Entertainment to Podcastica Network. So uh, we're all great friends. I don't have to wish them the best because they are doing the best. Daphne and Paik have always been part of what I have done here, as well as what they do there, as well as what I do on podcasts on occasion when I'm invited. So uh, I hope to be invited on Run for Your Lives. It'd be fun to do that again. I haven't done one in a long time, but uh, they're they're going to be on the podcast network, which made a lot more sense in my opinion. You know, I had time to like. Uh, think about it uh Paik has been on podcastka right uh, about like five or six years with uh rima after sean had left stranger uh strange indeed and then uh he got with daphne to do a run for your lives and then daphne got more involved with uh you know yellow jackets wtf uh handmaid's tale cast right. and everything else so it made more sense so uh all the best to them. Obviously, you're going to probably hear them on here, probably on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, or maybe any other podcast that we do. So uh, they're all welcome, as much as I would love to be part of what they're doing as well, because, yeah, we we all like to integrate our friends into uh, each other's podcasts. So you can hear everybody else, regardless, <laughs> no matter what network. Uh, but with that, uh, yeah, that, that's the news about that, uh, comic book related news. Well, Jeremy Renner apparently had a big accident recently who played Hawkeye in the Avenger series. And I just heard about that. Disney yeah. Plus, uh, he apparently had, uh, his, it's a plow accident or something. It was a like plow that? accident and his legs were run over. Oh, wow. And he lost a lot of blood. He was in critical condition, but stable. Uh, all the best to Jeremy and what's going on there. Please yeah. get well and get better. We want to see you in more films. Uh, obviously, an Academy Award nominee uh, for The Hurt Locker, as well as uh, there was another one there that I'm forgetting, but I'm sorry, Jeremy, if I forgot it. But uh, you were always known as being Hawkeye and... You will still always be known as Hawkeye, uh, right. regardless. Uh, uh, all the best to you, and please, please get yeah. back on your feet. I'm hoping things get well for you. Rest, definitely rest. Uh, but it seems like things are are going well as far as that, from what I've read. Um, as far as uh, podcast recommendations, uh, I've already mentioned it. Run for your lives. They're going to be on Podcastica. Uh, podcast is, uh, uh, this is, uh, it's showtime. It's, it's going to be a, uh, movie based podcast, Richly, basically going to be covering anything movies wise. So Jason decided he wanted to do everything. Now, mind you, I, I gave him that opportunity a long time ago. We did airplane on adrenaline cinema podcast, which is kind of way out of right wing for me. We had fun, Rima, him and I. But uh, the, the cool thing about that with his idea and that thought process is that it could be anything that anybody brings up. So it could be drama, comedy, dramedy, <laughs> action, adventure, fantasy, right. anything that gets your that, 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 that thrills your activity within films. It, it could be all of the genres. So um Jason's putting that out there, and uh, they did Miracle on 34th Street to uh, start off with the holiday season. They just did uh, the new Glass Onion, which was a Knives Out movie. I, I still have to see that. I get, I've had so many people tell me how great it is. I thought it was done very well. It's not like Knives Out, in my opinion, of how Knives Out really intrigued me i thought this was a little bit more clue right more than anything and it gave me those vibes which made me like it even more 
Yeah, I've had that, a lot like, of people the, say the that, you know, that they liked it better than even the first one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it's Showtime. Check that out. So uh, they covered those two particular movies uh, with uh, Pounds of Pixels. Obviously, you guys already heard the Marilyn Gigliotti interview that I just put out. It's on right. YouTube. It's on the podcast. Marilyn was so gracious in order to give me that interview recently, just before the new year. And I was able to get it on New Year's Eve out to you guys. <laughs> So uh, thank you, Marilyn, for being there. And please go to her, all her stuff, her social media, as well as her website. If you're interested in booking her for anything, buying her merchandise, anything, uh, they'll be on the convention circuit, still plugging out Clerks 3. Uh, we still have to do a Clerks 3 review here on Panels to the Pixels podcast. So maybe uh, when Steve is back, we could actually do that just for fun get a round Absolutely. table going on so uh whoever wants to come on that our friends could come on and we could just talk about it uh mm -hmm. i got to see it in the theaters with uh michael belicos as well as just before i did that i actually did see it on streaming because i bought it on itunes the night it came out but uh <laughs> i i got offered the whole uh press thing in westchester to go see it with mike belicos but uh and you didn't see it <laughs> I the first time I saw it, I saw it on iTunes. Okay, it dropped and I bought it. Right, and then I got called and said, "Hey, uh, can you come down to Jersey?" And like, no, what's well, closest <laughs> to you? And Mike Bellicos was going to be there, so uh, with all the other press people, so I got to go. <laughs> right, so I got to see it, you know, in Westchester. Oh, okay, that's good, and on a theater screen at least. But uh, yeah, I'm, at least I'm it was still... the second or third time. I'm still waiting to uh, get pre you know press screenings myself, you know, but that that'll I'm sure will come with time. It comes with time. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of knowing the right people. Exactly. But uh, I with I, I don't with, have that. I don't have that. Uh, what is it? I don't have that juice like you do. It's not juice. It's just like <laughs> I, I guess it's me annoying the hell out of people. I don't know. <laughs> annoying the hell out of the right people, I should say. Ben has. Real true press credentials. Me, I just right. I just know people and harass them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, what podcast recommendations uh, do you want to offer, Rob? As well as what you're doing now. Um, podcast recommendations. As always, I think I've actually mentioned this before. So I mean, I listen to a few, uh, especially to try to stay to up to date with uh like comic book news variant the uh the podcast is actually very good uh they nor they haven't been on as much as they normally are they they do have a r amazing youtube video and they talk about every character you could think of out there what's new what's you know what's new in pop culture also but they uh bunch of you know group of guys that they're you know they're pretty cool um and they do just do a pretty good show so yeah i enjoy that most of the time and what are you up to with fantasy picks movie edition fantasy picks we are taking a hiatus right now um we will be back probably uh around the end of february or beginning of march uh we're what we're gonna do is it was our one year um uh, that we just did we just did the end of uh year review uh a few days ago and so now what we're doing is we're going to take a little break look at our entire season and just see what worked what didn't work and you know and just come back with you know a lot stronger with hopefully uh more consistency yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah you and i did the uh <laughs> 2022's best and worst <laughs> best and worst of uh 2022 and and it's funny cuz after after uh after we did that episode I thought about like 10 more things that were like the worst things and I was like I wish I would have gotten that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I know, right? I kept I throwing we... out the things that I liked but yeah. did okay in the theater <laughs> and you're like no, that's not how it is. No, it did terribly. I'm like I want to you didn't like it. You didn't like it. No, Which... I was looking at the numbers. That's what it was. Oh, okay. I, that, that's what I, I was. Because you know how it is. We could like something, but then you look at it and you go, oh, I didn't realize that was a lost. Or I didn't realize that, you know, on. Uh, well, we could say that Black Adam did really do bad. 
<laughs> yeah, like on Rotten Tomato, all of a sudden you'll see. T- you, of course, like Rotten Tomatoes is just one of those uh, grading uh, websites that you really can't rely on that much. But like you'll see the critic score and then you see the audience score. And sometimes it is the complete opposite from each other. So, you know, so there are times that when I look at a movie and I was like, I really like that movie. I got to see whether the audience really liked it or the critics or critics really liked it. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I side more with the audience and the, uh, oh, the same here. critics sometimes. Yeah. But there are times where I could see where the critics are going and it's sounds like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, you know, if they want really good critics, you could pay us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Smith will say, I don't get paid. I just say what I like. Exactly. Which is true, which is what Kevin does. And everybody keeps claiming that he gets paid. No, he doesn't get paid. No, Kevin's not just at all. a big, huge fanboy. He'll cry over anything. No, he, uh, look, he's, he's, <laughs> a, he's the same way as all of us. He's um, a diehard he, fan. He's a diehard fan, started as a diehard fan. And still and, is a diehard fan. Still is a diehard fan, except that, you know, he's a diehard fan that now directs movies and, you know. And, and does the uh, IMDb boat at right. San Diego Comic-Con. And, and he's, <laughs> world no- he's world known, but, you know, but he's still in the end, you know, he's one of us. He is. So that's how I see it. He's just one of us. He, he's basically our representative. Yeah, he, he <laughs> is the Generation X representation correct for current you know, so, movies that are media that we all wanted to see as we grew up and are getting it as exactly. we are in our middle ages yes <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah no i always every time uh you know they they say something about like that about kevin smith i'm like no he's just you know passionate guy yeah that and, and unfortunately he gets a lot of slack sometimes because sometimes he'll say something and they'll take They'll take what he says and they'll just uh, exaggerate it or something like that. And I, I've seen him to the point where, because Kevin seems to be a person that, you know, he he's always said, you know, there's no reason for me to trash anybody or trash anybody's work or anything like that. And he normally tries to ignore what a lot of people say about him. Yeah, he does. I have, I have seen him, you know. He defends himself every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. And on occasion, I see that, you know, he just kind of had enough of yeah. people trashing him, you know. So, and I don't blame him. You know, the internet could be very uh, vicious out there. So, well, that's why he's got Mark Bernard. And Mark's really much the big barking dog that he needs on his side. Right. And I, I do agree with a lot of what Mark says at times with when it comes to movie uh, critiques. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I, I, well, you know, I could side with both. Sometimes yeah, I'll listen here. to both. I'll listen to both of them. And then, and then I'll be, be like, in the middle between both of them. Be in the middle. You know, I was like, all right. Yeah, I, I agree with him, but I also agree with Mark. You yeah. know, so, <laughs> so it is true. Those two, I would love to get on a panel together just to see and just throw them uh, some sort of trivia questions. Right. And then see what the, where they're divided. But I would I, love to have, believe it or not, I would love to have uh, Mark Bernard on my on my podcast because since we review bad movies, he's very good at that. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> so he's, he's really, very really opinionated, good. and he's he very good at that. He doesn't care. So. He doesn't care. So that's the beauty of it. I was like, oh, I will have you on my show anytime. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, all right. As you heard, you know, Rob's been pretty much a staple here. And he will continue to be a staple here on and off uh, yeah. in between fantasy picks being on hiatus. So the, here and Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So you'll be hearing Rob's voice here and there every once in a hey, while. Listen, now that the season is over, I'm not going to have much to do. So I'm going to be on everybody's podcast. Yeah, well, you're, you're already <laughs> on for the oceans, the remaining oceans movies that Ben yeah. and I are going to do. And Ben's fine with it. So we're going to do Peacemaker season one review so there's probably something that's gonna else. be a lot, that that's gonna be a lot of fun so uh we'll work on that so you'll get to hear rob's voice more and more so uh he's not a stranger to this he's been on while steve's been gone and very helpful and steve does appreciate it and appreciates uh what i'm doing and i do still love and appreciate steve he is coming <laughs> back ladies and gentlemen he is coming back so yes, uh, don't believe uh 
the words that people are saying out there. No, there's nobody saying any words. He's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, that ends our show for this uh, episode. So uh, all I have to say is same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. <laughs> I am Robert. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.